Hello everyone, my name is Willy Mutschler. I am an assistant professor in international macroeconomics at the University of Tübingen and I would like to welcome you to this lecture series on computational macroeconomics. This is a graduate course aimed at our master students, but it will also be quite suitable for early PhD students who want to get familiar with state-of-the-art numerical methods that are commonly used in modern macroeconomics. In particular, we will dive in into the so-called dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model paradigm, in short, these G models, because it has become standard in modern macroeconomic research. It is a very broad, very general class um, of, of structural models that are strongly rooted in economic theory. And these models are microfounded. Okay? That means we explicitly formulate the dynamic optimization problems of the various agents that we have, of the households, of the firms, of the banks, of the fiscal authority, or, or the central bank, the international structure, everything. Okay, and we do this mathematically, and we solve then those dynamic optimization problems under uncertainty, because we add stochastics to the system of equations. Now, conditional on some distributional assumptions and certain features that we want to add to these models, those these G models will generate you a joint probability distribution for all the endogenous variables that you have, like output, like consumption, like investment, like inflation, um, like unemployment. And in other words, those DSG models are basically our laboratory. Okay, With those models, we can actually do experiments. So we, we might be interested in what are the effects of quantitative easing when we are at the zero lower bound. Uh, what are the dynamics when we when the economy transitions from dirty industries to green industries? Um, how large is the fiscal multiplier uh, in times of the pandemic? Uh, what is the effect of a 5% VAT cut um, on the income distribution of households? All those questions, we would like to have a laboratory for this, and those DSG models are such. Um, and they allow us to, to analyze exactly how economic agents respond to changes in the environment. Um, because all variables are determined simultaneously and endogenously. Now it is not surprising that these G models are intensively used in um, policy institutions like all major central banks, uh, like the IMF, like the World Bank, but uh, at many research institutions as well. Now this course is not an introduction into the modeling aspects of these G models. If you are interested in that, there is a companion course this semester taught by Gernot Müller called Advanced Maker 2, who, who teaches you all the bells and whistles, uh, everything that you need to know about modern macroeconomic modeling and what kind of features are required to answer which questions. Now this course is a bit different. Because in many textbooks, you will often find a very simplified version of these G models that in some cases that you can even analyze and solve with pen and paper, okay, given some simplifying assumptions. And that is very important to get the internal transmission center to understand the intuition behind these models. However, certain questions really require you to work with more complex models, um, models that are highly nonlinear. Say you are concerned about occasionally binding constraints like the zero lower bound. How do we get out? Of, how do we use forward guidance? What, is the, what are the effects of quantitative tightening? And stuff like that. So we need to work with models that introduce nonlinearities that you cannot really solve with pen and paper anymore. Or maybe you want to study the effect of introducing the possibility of something really bad happening to the economy. It might be a very tiny probability that a disaster happens, but if it happens, the effects are huge. Think about a financial crisis, think about a pandemic, think about a war. All those things do require you to take a step fur further from typical textbook models, uh, from those three equation New Keynesian models, and really work with more complex, highly nonlinear models. And this is our point of departure, okay? So how do you actually 
work with these kind of models, okay? How do you pre-process these models in a computer? How do you then solve them? How do you make your analysis with these kind of models? Okay, so this course is really about the methods that are useful for this and the methods that you can then use for your own questions that you want to answer for your own models. Well, granted, this is often very cumbersome and challenging and it will re require some investment that you will need to undergo. Okay, so this is, let me be clear, this is not an easy course as there is a huge component of self-teaching involved because we do need to get ourselves familiar with uh, several things from mathematics, from numerics and statistics. And the only way to do this is hands-on. Okay, so this is not a course where you get 90 minutes of lectures and then you're supposed to understand everything. No, this course is really about practicing and diving into the material. Okay, at, at some point it's going to be a bit slow because we really need to do to understand a cer certain algorithms, certain concepts by practicing them, by implementing them ourselves. Of course, there will be several theoretical inputs and presentations of uh, methods and uh, how to solve certain problems. But the real focus of this course is for you to practice this directly on your computer in your time um, by means of several exercises. Only by try and error you, you, really un you will really understand the foundations of computational macroeconomics. So this is really a hands-on course. Now, when we look at a certain concept, we will actually do two things. First, we are going to look at it at a very, let's say, a very user-friendly way. And for this, we will use Dynair. Dynair is a, in my opinion, very user-friendly um, toolkit for all sorts uh, of analysis that you can do with these GE models. And of course, I'm a member of the Dynair team, so it is uh, very important to me that you get yourself familiar with the software. It is used in all sorts of uh, institutions in, in at the European Central Bank, at the Federal Reserve Bank, at the IMF. So this is definitely a very important skill that you should have. Now, Dynair is open source. And of course, you can have a look at the algorithms. Um, and sometimes we will, but uh, at least in my opinion, most people use Dynair as a black box, okay? Because it is in a sense user-friendly and it just gives you results. But this is where we do our second step, okay? Once we get ourselves familiar with the concept, see how it works, what the end result should look like, we will actually then go ahead and program those algorithms ourselves in the bit simplified manner, okay? without going into all those ne neat little details and optimizations that Dynair do, does, but just focus on the major implementation of an algorithm, a solution algorithm, like perturbation method, like a projection method, like how do we do impulse response analysis, what, how do we actually implement this in a programming language of your choice. The goal of this course is to get yourself familiar with, uh, with a variety of algorithms, with examples and situations in which computational thinking is useful in, uh, say, approximating or evaluating abstract macroeconomic phenomena. Now, the programming language that we use this semester will be MATLAB. Okay, the, there are several reasons for this and we will actually discuss the reasons in an exercise later on. Now, if you don't have any programming experience, that's totally fine. Um, you will do so by just following along with this course, okay? Just remember or remember to take a little bit of more time for preparation of the material, just that you get f yourself familiar with programming uh, as well. We will do this in baby steps, okay? And actually MATLAB, or one of the reasons I chose MATLAB, it is easy to, to get into and it gives you all the tools that uh, that you need to start programming um, in a very nice way. And once you know one language, like learning maybe another programming language is actually much more easier because they are all based on the same principles. Now, let's talk about uh, the course organization. So we will roughly follow the flipped classroom teaching method. So meaning that uh, most exercises begin with a theoretical or uh, conceptual question uh, for which 
material for which I will uh, give you some material. Okay, so this could be research papers, textbook chapters, um, videos, of course, or some slides. Um, those will be made available to you both on Elias, but I will also put most of the material uh, in a GitHub repository. Now, very important for the students at the University in Tübingen, uh, please become a member of the Elias a group and computation macroeconomics so I can get in touch with you. Now, you are required to study this material that um, I will give you either on your own or much, much better in groups, okay, in a study group. And then we are going to meet on Wednesdays from uh, 4 to 6 p.m. and on Thursdays from uh, 10 to 12 a.m. in Q&A sessions, okay? So if you have any questions, if you want to dive more into the material or if you didn't understand the material that I presented you with, uh, we can answer those questions. Now, those uh, meetings will be alterna alternating between in-person and online meetings via Zoom. Um, please see the schedule on Elias uh, when we meet in person and when we meet in um, just online. For me, it is also very important if you struggle with something, it is very easy to schedule a meeting with me. Um, I have a booking tool for this. So please do this um, and so I can help you with the exercises. Um, the solutions to the assignments will be uh, given to you as well, but with a time delay. So please bring a um, computer to you with you to this uh, sessions. If you don't have access to a portable computer, please get in touch with me so I can uh, arrange one for you. Okay, now let's wrap up with the topics that I want to cover with you this semester. So in the first week, it's all going to be all about introductions. Introduction like this video on the course. Um, there will be uh, other videos on in a very brief tour of Dynair and of MATLAB. Now the second and the third week, we will actually review like the most commonly used DSG models, the RBC and the new Keynesian model. So everyone is on the same page because we will keep using those models to illustrate the methods, but we will of course all use different examples from the literature, more, com more complicated models as we go along. Computationally, once we have the theory, we'll actually talk about how to pre-process these models in Dynair, how to pre-process them, but al also on our own in MATLAB. Now, the fourth week, we're going to talk, going to talk about solution concepts. Um, what does it mean if we do something or we solve models under perfect foresight or stochastically? What is a policy function? And once we have a, such a solution concept, we are going to be able, and we will do this, of course, uh, to compute things like impulse response functions, like variance decompositions, historical decompositions, optimal policy, etc. Okay, so this is what we're going to do in week four. In week five, we will then focus really on the perfect foresight simulations, again, both in Dynair, but then implement this ourselves in MATLAB as well. And week six and seven, will be um, dedicated to stochastic simulations and particularly the first order perturbation technique or the, in other words, the solution to so-called rational expectations models. Okay, we are, we are going to see how this is implemented in Dynair and we're actually also going to implement this by ourselves so we really understand what is going on, what is a perturbation technique. Now in the eighth week, this week will be actually your midterm exam week. Okay, so this course in this course, you are required to do two exams, one midterm and one at the end of the semesters. In the ninth and tenth week, we're actually um, taking the perturbation approach and we're going to look at higher order perturbation techniques. Now, perturbation is a local method. So in week 11, we're actually going to get ourselves familiar and get our hands dirty with the so-called projection method, which is a global solution method. And the remaining of the semester will be much about applications, about uh, models with, say, occasionally binding constraints like the zero lower bound with models with rare disaster risk and several other examples um, of the literature. And the last week of the semester will be then your end term. To get credits for this course, there will be a midterm and an end term exam, both counting equally towards your overall grade. As our course is exercise-based, so will be the exam. You will get a bunch of exercises 
In fact, I'm going to ask you to replicate several results from papers in the literature. And because this requires you to try out stuff and error, of course, you will get some time for this, okay? So this is both exam are take home and you are required to hand in the solutions within a week. Okay, on uh, Ilias, I've uh, prepared a to-do list for you. Please go through the list and I'm looking forward to meeting you in our first Q&A session. All right, see you soon.